Today I wanted to do a, a video for you as quickly as I can to just kind of give you a quick rundown on who I am and what my background is. Over several years as I've been in the industry, from time to time I'll go to a training class, the instructor will introduce me and he'll say something, you know, like, you know, Abner Rand is here, uh, he's a former SWAT officer, blah, 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 we're glad to have him, and then I stand up and, hey guys, and I would always allow the, the instructor to finish, and then I would make it a point to make this abundantly clear, and I will make it abundantly clear to you guys as well. I was never a former SWAT officer. I was never CID, I was never narcotics. I was a regular police officer. I was a regular Joe police officer. Uh, and understand, only cops can fully understand there's nothing regular about being a regular police officer. You do it all. I mean, you do everything. In 1999, I was working in non-invasive cardiology. My wife and I had our first child. He was just an infant. And I realized at that point, if I don't follow through with my desire to be a police officer, for the rest of my days, I will regret it. Deeply regret it. Went through the written exam, sat through, through the review board, uh, ran the obstacle course. When, when you become a police officer in Florida, it is a huge, huge deal. To get into the academy, I mean, you have to pass a bunch of stuff just to get into the academy and pay your own way, okay? I was paying my own way. Struggled my way through months of the academy, 672 contact hours. Um, got that right there. And then uh, sat for the state boards, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. That's a huge deal in and of itself. That test is a monster and got that right there. And then uh, went to work for the agency in the town where I grew up, Apopka Police Department. Great agency. We got on to field training. Hmm. I want to say my second or third night. My, uh, my field training officer, Adams, I believe was his last name. We're in his car. And we're somewhere on the far end of Apopka's territory, and one of our CID guys calls in over the radio that he needs assistance. And my FTO actually does a 180 in the car, which was pretty impressive. He spun that, that uh, interceptor around, and he got on the throttle. Those of you who are cops who've been there, you understand what I'm talking about. It's hard to hear one of your brothers getting his tail whipped. My field training officer, the last thing he said to me before he got out of the car was, where I go, you go. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And <laughs> I said, yes, sir, to watch him throw it in park. And the, the car went ka -ka 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 -ka, as it finally caught. And here was our CID guy just mere feet in front of the car, getting his butt handed to him. His shirt was ripped off his body, half, you know, half ripped off. There was blood coming off his, off his scalp. Anyways, long story short, we got that kid under control. Uh, got him cuffed onto the hood of the car. And my field training officer turns to me and says, Miranda, read a Miranda. And he thought that was just the funniest thing in the world ever, and everybody started laughing. And I remember thinking, what the hell? Everybody's laughing. And I'm still... <laughs> and that was my first instant of understanding. This is combat. The safeties in my life just got pulled off. I just entered a whole new chapter of my life, and holy crap. That was a major shocker for me, because, uh, you know, you got to understand, like I said, I, I'd come from non-invasive cardiology, this is a very professional world of healthcare, and I'd come into this world of law enforcement that was just off the chain. And guys, you have to understand, Florida law enforcement is off the chain, big time. Let's jump forward to 2004. I'm working for uh, an agency here in Tennessee, uh, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga Police Department. And university policing is the wild, wild west guy. Got involved in a couple of brawls with football players. That wasn't fun. And realized, man, I got to learn how to talk my way out of fights better than this. So I burned a week of vacation time and went through the FBI school on crisis negotiations, which is known as crisis negotiator. That certificate right there. And crisis negotiator is essentially hostage negotiator is all it is. Uh, the course was taught by a superb instructor, uh, Peggy. And... Um, she uh, she really threw us into the deep end. For those of you negotiators that are out there, I'm going to say a phrase, and for everybody else, uh, find it. I would urge you to find it. The phrase is more pies, more pies. Go find it. Go find out what it means. Um, that's a phrase that I have never forgotten uh, all the way up until today. I have operated off of that phrase in so many instances that I've gotten involved in as a police officer, as a businessman. Uh, more pies, that is... That's golden. You need to learn that one. From there, I 
went into hostage negotiator specialty topics, which is, I'm sorry, crisis negotiator specialty topics, that certificate right there, which is essentially hostage negotiator hostile negotiations. And they teach you how to deal with everything from bank robbers to terrorists, and then how to do one-on-one -on -one face to face negotiations. And what that taught me how to do was to learn how to manage adrenaline spikes. When you've got a threat that is as, as close as you and I are to one another, because understand as a negotiator, you have to be close. You don't get the luxury of being far. You actually have to talk your way as close as you can and stay as close as you can. I have the ability to say to you guys that I have two saves under my belt because of the skills that I learned as a negotiator. From that step, I went, uh, I left that agency after about 13 months, went over to another agency, which was a more conventional uh, municipality agency. And um, in, the, in the interim uh, of going from full-time work to volunteer work to back into full-time work, I fell into magazine writing. And this is really technically where, where the real beginning of this video comes, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of that background about who I am and what led me to be there. I started writing short articles about the things that were happening to me as a police officer. Uh, worked from there into doing t &Es on weapons. And once I got, I don't know, five articles or so into weapons and so on and so forth, I realized I'm writing on subject matters that I really don't actively know that much about. And that led me into the training environment. I went to Tactical Defense Institute in West Union, Ohio, which is honestly the best place I've ever been, period. Uh, the men and women who train at TDI are a huge cross-section of military, law enforcement, private sector professionals who have made it a point. See, the thing about, about TDI is the instructors there go to other people's schools. And that's one of the points of this video that I really want you guys to understand. We have this fascination uh, with our industry that if you're not special forces, you're a nobody. I've had people uh, question me on the range and also on social media. You know, what's your background? I'm just a police officer. Oh, well, then you have nothing valid to say. Really? We're in warfare here in the United States, and police officers on the, are on the front line of that war. And yet police officers wholesale are being pushed to the edge and, and are being marginalized in our industry and being told you have nothing relevant to share. Guys, that's, that's, that could not be further from the truth. And so I went to training, got as much training as I could get my hands on. These are all these uh, certificates that are going by on the screen in no particular order because in my computer they're, they're cataloged differently. Um, but you can see that some of these are doubles. And what I would say to those of you who are interested in training, if you find a class that really, that really uh, gets your attention, go back. Believe me, you're never going to pick it all up the first go around or the second or the third. Some of these classes I've been to twice and three times. Some of these classes that I've been to, I've been to again and don't have certificates from. Because when you're media, when you're gun media, many times you're invited to places and the lead instructor forgets to tell the secretary that you're coming and your name never makes it onto the roster. And we'll be unto you as a media guy to say, well, I want my, my, I want my certificate. You know, it doesn't work that way. You didn't pay to be at that class. They honored you and allowed you to come to that class. So I've been to classes that I don't have paper to prove. Larry Vickers is one of them. You're not going to see a certificate from Larry Vickers, but Larry Vickers will tell you. I've been to his training. And that class with Larry Vickers was, I really believe, the beginning of a new chapter in my life, period, in my life. I entered a new segment of the training world and that class, like that brawl that I had in 2000 as a, as a new police officer, where I realized my life was no longer operating in a safety environment. All the safeties were off. In 2011, uh, at Larry's class, I realized I had now just stepped into a brand new sector of the training world, and I could never go back. This industry is about learning. It's about, don't do this to those people that are in the, in the industry, ask questions, okay? What's your background? This is why I'm doing this video. If you find even a remote little piece of merit in someone, give them a little chance, man. Listen, I was at Rainbow City, Alabama, Rainbow City Police Department, Alabama, and I remember I was standing in front of a captain one day, and I was doing my armor presentation, and his lieutenant kept coming in and out of the room looking at me, and he'd look at me, and he'd leave the room. He'd come back and he'd look at me, and he'd leave the room, and I'm thinking, what is this dude doing? And finally, he, uh, 
he says, can I, can I see you for a minute? When I finished, we went out in the hall, and he says, come here. And he walks me into his office, and he holds a swap magazine, and I'm thinking, oh, crap. And he goes, is that you? Because I was on the cover. And he says, he says, is that you? And I said, yeah, that's me. He said, uh, he goes, that's me. And he points to a plaque on the wall. That was an article that he'd written for Swap Magazine that had been turned into a plaque. That was Chase Jenkins. Chase and I became fast friends. Chase invited me to come out to Talon Defense, which is his training, uh, his training school. Man. Best move I ever made in my life. Chase, like Larry, like John Benner at TDI, like Frank Proctor, like a lot of the guys I've trained with, are people who are just, you know, born to teach. And Chase Jenkins just threw so much incredible knowledge at us. And what's cool about Chase Jenkins, like the people at TDI, Chase Jenkins makes it a point to go to other people's classes and submit himself to their will and listen to their counsel and take their advice and because of that he brings that back to Talon Defense which is why I keep going back to Talon Defense as evidenced by all these certificates that you see going by on the screen I keep going back to Talon Defense because Chase Jenkins is that squared away of a guy had a lot of training at Talon Defense uh, left the body armor manufacturer went to work for Inforce which really put me even deeper inside of the tactical and the military and the federal alphabet soup community and I picked up soaked up even more knowledge from those people and even and during that time still going to still going to tactical training I uh, started attending some training with Frank Proctor um, Frank Proctor is a walking encyclopedia of shooting uh, picked up a lot of wisdom from him once again with Frank Proctor I've been to th three I think of his classes but I've only got a certificate for one of them um, super, super sharp guy. You know, I can't stand in front of you, or in this case, sit on my truck bed. I can't stand in front of you and say, this is who I am. This is my resume. There's no such thing. There's no way for me to lay any of this out for you in a succinct manner. There's no way for anybody to lay this stuff out in a succinct manner. I've got people that I know in this industry who don't have squat of military, of law enforcement, of anything. But they have so much wisdom about firearms and tactics and CQB and CQC, same thing, uh, that they could teach these classes because they have spent years around the professionals who do it and they have spent years around, uh, uh, they have spent time around these people listening how they do it. And Frank will tell you, Frank Proctor is a good example, by the way. Um, former SF and when you go to his classes he tells you I was in a position where I had to teach this stuff and I didn't fully know how to teach it and I started getting into competition shooting and realized that the private citizens are out shooting the military and the law enforcement and that's why the man became uh, you know a master shooter that he is because he realized the knowledge is over here I may be over here but the knowledge is over here so I can either continue to be Mr. Special Forces or I can say there's a lot of knowledge, wisdom and discernment over there and I'm going to go get it. T to be honest with you, I would actually seek out instructors, go to the class, not even really giving a rip about what their background was and just saying what, what can I pick up from this guy. Um, uh, when I left Inforce, I uh, started my own photography and videography gig and got a chance to do some classes with Ken Hackathorn. And what really ticks me off is I dedicated myself to go out to the classes and, you know, do a cell photography and video. And, uh, and, and I said to myself, if I try to go shoot, and Ken had said, you're welcome to come out. <laughs> I said, if I go out and shoot, I'm going to end up missing a great shot that I could have had had I had this camera with me or, you know, one of my Nikons. So I said to my wife, I'm going to leave my weapons in the vehicle and I'm just going to focus on working. And... Uh, what happened by doing that was I got to be in the shoot house every single drill and I got to watch every single person run through. How much knowledge do you think I picked up that day? I remember thinking, wow, I just got 20 something, 20 something iterations of the same drill 20 something different ways from Ken. Uh, Ken Hackathorn is phenomenal uh, and understand I don't use that phrase lightly. Ken Hackathorn is a phenomenal instructor. The breadth of knowledge that that man has in his mind is astounding, and I got to soak up some of it. Did I pull a single trigger? Not one. Not, not a single run. And because I have done so much shoot house work, I can tell you that I didn't need to pull the trigger because the learning moment isn't, the learning moment isn't when you're pulling the trigger. The learning moment 
is in the after action review with Ken. And I got, to, I got a chance to pick up all those little tidbits of knowledge because Ken will, right then and there, he'll pull out his pistol and he'll show you, you know, this is the angle you needed to work. And I'm standing there with a camera on a boom, reaching down into the shoe house and I'm picking this stuff up or I'm behind somebody with a camera and I'm picking up all these little tidbits of knowledge. This last certificate that I'm showing you here is a class that I did almost a year ago now. And if you look at the date on that certificate, what you'll see there is that that was the day that Chattanooga, Tennessee was attacked by a terrorist. On that day, we were on the range. Um, there were some uh, instructors that had come in from the Secret Service to help us uh, do some stuff. Uh, we were working vehicle drills and so on and so forth. And uh, I remember the vast majority of our instructors' phones went off simultaneously. And they raced out of there. And we were, we were being attacked. And I remember standing on the range and my, my, my blood ran cold because I wanted to go and help, but I'm no longer a cop. And my son, my only son, volunteers for the Tennessee Aquarium in the summertime, and he's part of the summer camp program. And he was out there with campers and I knew where the shooting had occurred, and I knew in relation to where it was to the aquarium. And understand, hindsight is 2020. But while it's happening, you have to ask yourself, is this one person? Is this a nut with a gun? Or is this an orchestrated terrorist attack? Is this the beginning of a day of killing? We didn't know. And I had to commit my son's spirit into God's hands and say, Lord, he's yours. He's always been yours. But he is yours to watch over. Thy will be done. And then I prayed for the law enforcement officers here in Chattanooga, and I prayed, Lord, please be with those men and women because I don't know what's going on today. And I pray that their training is sufficient to see them through the day. Because guys, once again, I can't say this enough, we didn't know what was going on on that day. We didn't know if we had teams of people moving through the city that were gonna start killing. What this does, this brings us full circle from the beginning. As a young police officer, realizing that the safeties were off in my life, realizing that I'd stepped in with both feet into law enforcement, realizing that I was now on the front line of combat inside of our own borders. That's 2000, that's pre 9-11. Here we were 2015 with a terrorist attack in Chattanooga. And by the way, Chattanooga might as well be uh, you know, small town USA, because Chattanooga is a small town. And here we were undergoing a terrorist attack and I was having to trust that my fellow police officers here in the Chattanooga area had done their due diligence and had trained to be able to defend me, my family, everybody. All of us in Chattanooga were at the mercy of Hamilton County and Chattanooga Police Department. And they did an exemplary job and I'm proud of them. If you don't fully understand that the combat that we are now engaged in within our own borders is a war that is being fought primarily by the police officer, secondarily by the armed citizen, then please do all of us in this industry a favor and leave. Go back to your video games. Please just go drink the Kool-Aid somewhere else and leave us alone. Because there are a lot of men like me that are trying to seek as much training as they can anywhere they can. If you don't see the value of a police officer and what he or she brings to this industry because you're so in love with the mentality of special forces, special forces, then there's not much that I can say or anybody else can say to change your mind. Police officers are the front line, the last line of defense, the first and last line of defense for our nation. They are worthy of being listened to and they need to be supported. I hope this video clears up a lot of the questions that people have about me. Uh, I defy anyone to find me anything written or video where I have tried to pass myself off as something that I'm not, because I haven't, I know I haven't. Like I say to people, I have a wife, three kids, a dog, and a mortgage. That's who I am. This piece of dirt that I own is because my wife and I chose to move out here because I realized that the things that I was learning as a police officer, I needed to practice. And there's no greater way to take knowledge and turn it into wisdom than to temper it with discernment. And the only way to get that is time on the trigger. That's it. Seek training wherever you can get it. Uh, you know, ask, ask the instructor about their background. Reputable instructors have no problem showing you their background. And many of them will, will have it right up on their website. Um, if someone is very flashy, 
that ought to be an alarm for you. That ought to that ought to let you know that you need to be digging a little bit deeper. Be careful of what you're learning and who you're learning it from because it can bite you in the future. So anyways, as always, God bless you all. Thank you guys for watching. Get those guns out in practice. Have a good one.